the focus now is on the questioning, which we're going to, which is our focus this morning. So that's cognitive domain. So if you look at the, okay, now there are. I need, I need glasses. <laughs> Sometimes I pretend I can see them. Of thinking skills. So we have knowledge. Then we have comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Um, but this original bloom, which was published in 1956, was revised as usual because learning is uh, is a process that that's continuous. It doesn't stagnate. So. Over the years, it has to be reviewed and revised. So we have the latest bloom. So this is the original bloom's taxonomy, which you have there on your material. And then in 1995, so very fairly recently, in the year 2000, we have the revision, 2001. So you can see the difference there. So if you notice, in the old version, we're using nouns. Knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, evaluation. They're all nouns. So in other words, they're highly, highly cognitive. However, when you look at the new version, they're all verbs. And they're all progressive verbs, which somehow initiates the fact that they have something is... Uh, there's really movement here. So remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So those. Now, so you can see here, so not only are we differing on, in terms of terminology, but the emphasis. So the emphasis in the revised bloom is already on authentic instructional delivery. Okay. Okay, so we take, let's take a look at, um, okay, so let's, before we, before we uh, go to those, I'd like us to go back to the question patterns. I want to find out what are examples of <coughs> WH questions that you ask. Just phrase it to me. Just uh, and then beaver, do does did has have had. Could you like let's start with your what? What are the usual W H questions that you ask? Well, because I teach comprehension in the academy, mm -hmm. so normally uh, before uh, in, the, in the beginning introduction page you have pictures there. Mm -hmm. So normally, I say, can you see in the picture? What do mm -hmm. you think this reading is all about before mm -hmm. we start? <laughs> and then who? Yeah. Or maybe who? Yeah. Okay. Or do you think will be the main characters? Mm -hmm. What about you, Mamsi? What are the usual WH? What What do you teach? The adult, adults and academy also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Based on the uh, topic that I have, I I prepare the five Ws, mm -hmm. but but. Yeah, I ask them one by one, mm -hmm. and I cannot but remember. Usually, it's what mm -hmm. that they yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I cannot remember now because my mind is. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll excuse you. Yeah. You you also recall that when students you ask them a what question, mm -hmm. and then when you follow up a what question with a why, they immediately. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you would see the smirk on their faces. Why? Because that would require them to explain. Yeah, explain for and they normally don't like yeah. it. Usually what I did in my class is before the class started, it's more an intimate question with the kids. Mm -hmm. So it's the, you know, their, how they started their day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, usually, oh, what's your breakfast? Who prepared your breakfast? How did you go to school? Mm -hmm. And so kind of question like that. So mm -hmm. it's like knowing your your students' condition on that day mm -hmm. so because they, they want to school. So, mm -hmm. you know, after school program is really mm -hmm. tough for kids. Mm -hmm. It's more being intimate. So you more prepared. That's remembering. Mm -hmm. But when you ask, what is the main idea? That's a very understanding. And then, what questions would you ask 
if you were to interview the main character, mm. it's a what question, and you would think it's remembering, but it's actually applying. And then, how is this story related to your life? Mm -hmm. That's already analysis. And again, you will notice that the, the higher you go up, the better, the, the more that the bottom levels are actually integrated and inculcated into your line of questioning and evaluating what choice would you have if you were the one telling the story or if you were the main character what would you have done better okay so it's already evaluating and then creating like if you were the author, how will you end this? Mm -hmm. Make a different ending to yeah. the story. That's already creating. Okay? So this is a very good hierarchy of questions for a comprehension uh, uh, activity for a, After reading. For, a, for knowledge. You could ask them to define, list, identify, and then comprehension, explain, summarize. Remember, they will not be able to summarize if they do not understand. Yes. yes. Okay, so convert, translate, mm -hmm. application, apply, solve, show, modify, demonstrate. And then for analysis, differentiate, compare and contrast, distinguish this character from this character. Okay? How does this character relate to but of course, you have simpler ways of uh, designing your questions to so make it fit the level of learners that you have. Des uh, when you get them to design, where am I now? Design, construct, develop, formulate, create, and then evaluation, appraise. Okay? Now, when it comes, do you make your tests for students? Yes. Yeah. Short tests. Paper pencil test. Yeah. Okay. If you are making your test, this is okay. For factual, you can have multiple choice, true, false, matching type, sentence completion, short answer. They're all factual. Mm -hmm. And in the hierarchy that we have, that's just levels one and two. Mm -hmm. If you want application, you could have the multiple choice, short answer problem solving and an essay so that they would know how much of the information they are able to integrate and apply to other things and then analysis and evaluation usually essay so if you're the kind of teacher who will only be asking these questions that's very superficial yeah. okay and your essays don't need to be give me one paragraph <laughs> about yeah. just get them to uh, it depends, explain things. It depends on the purpose of the student because mm -hmm. some students they come to learn writing so mm -hmm. you have to teach them how to write the better one so mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be a short one supply yeah. of information or of input from what they have read and from what they have listened to so that they are able to write and speak so that's a completely different uh, set of art. what we're referring to here is the normal conversational questions that we ask them comprehension questions from stories that we uh, that we make them read okay and then this is interesting because all of us have, we have digital blue so here when you get them to go to YouTube Okay, this is remembering. When they go to Twitter, when they watch TED, that's understanding. Then when they oh. go to Picasso, that's applying, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, we have to also go technical and updated with the times. <laughs> um, this is a very, very helpful visual. Uh, that, that, that's the sign there. This is the website that you could go to so you could look at more examples of. I, I'm going to share the PowerPoint to you later on. Uh -huh. Don't worry. Um, all right. So before we go to uh, our activity for the day, let's. Uh, what, what, what do we ask? 
So first, let's... Uh, okay. Now, when you ask a question, do you get disappointed when your students don't raise their hands to answer or when they don't respond to you immediately? No, you don't. No, sometimes. Yeah, yeah sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you do. Mm. But times. Or if it's always the same one that responds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes when some students will say, I don't know, teacher. And automatically, yeah, even if you're not done with the question, yeah, they're like, they don't know. know. They, don't know. <laughs> they don't even give a damn to think mm. about the question. They stare at you. And <laughs> yeah. 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 So you would wonder, did this student really understand? Yeah. Yeah, Is this true. my question? Like, oh, yeah. Is it the way I asked? And then what, what we usually do is we rephrase the mm -hmm. question, right? We, we paraphrase it so mm -hmm. that, or simplify mm -hmm. it. Or we really, really even give examples. Yeah. So. But we have to remember that, okay, when you ask the question to your Korean learner, that question will still be processed in wow. Korean. That <laughs> takes time. Yeah. And then he thinks of the answer in Korean. Korean and thinks of the translation of that mm -hmm. answer in English before they can actually answer yeah, it. Right. That takes time. Mm -hmm. So, don't feel very... For all you know, they're just looking at you with seemingly black stares, but they're actually <laughs> thinking. thinking. Okay? Process. Uh, one professor in the... in the Macquarie University in Australia told me, we have a... We have an English cafe, and in that English cafe, we have students coming to talk to professors. Mm -hmm. And then our some of our professors complain that they don't have, if there are eight students, not all of the eight are able to actually speak mm -hmm. to them. But then I said, no, because if you ask them, mm -hmm. like, everybody to speak, then mm -hmm. everybody will be able to speak. Right. So you as a teacher should find a way to make sure that everybody in class gets to speak or share because quiet student does not necessarily mean dumb. Yeah. Right. Quiet students do not necessarily mean that they are not thinking and they're not listening to you except that it takes a while for them to process information. Mm. Okay? So they don't think as fast, but they are thinking. Mm -hmm. So you have to make accommodations for that leeway, that time, to ask your students for responses. Mm -hmm. Okay, no put-downs. <laughs> don't say, okay, let's call on another person. Uh, uh, don't immediately say that. Oh. Say, do you want more time to say? Yeah, usually. Yeah. I'll give you more time. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get right. back to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but don't immediately make some kind one or two sentences to mm -hmm. say something before you call on another person especially with our korean learners mm -hmm. they are very competitive mm -hmm. and if they feel that they are at a, a disadvantage over the other students they feel that their self-esteem mm -hmm. has uh, disappeared so mm -hmm. it's something that you have to uh, no put downs huh? don't yeah. immediately say okay let's call another person mm -hmm. Okay, you're still processing your give them that motivation that I know you're thinking I'll give you time so what about you are you ready something like that uh, build on the ideas of others so immediately if you ask a question and the answer is clearly not what you are requiring not the answer that you are expecting or that you want build on that use that and connect it to the answer or connect it to another question that you will throw back to the class. Remember, for as long as they are saying something in your classroom, that means their brains are working. So don't, don't discourage them by making them feel that oh, my answer was not right, okay? Just motivate them and say, the teacher accepted my answer, so I must have done something right. And that kind of motivates them. And oh, my idea is being discussed. And all the more they feel motivate, motivated about it. So 
build on the ideas of the others, even if the answer is far from uh, what you really want. Very difficult to do in the Korean context. Again, they're very uh, competitive yeah. and they don't want put downs. They don't want so. Okay. And then always, yeah. but you would be able to tell if the idea is just something foolish and then they, mm. they just burnt it out, out of their mouths without really thinking. So that's a completely different set. Different but school. acknowledge students who really make an effort. And these are the students that you have to Thinking time. We call that thinking time. It says, wait three seconds. After you ask a follow-up question or you call on another person. Again, even for native speakers, those who are already very good in English, they still we still need thinking time. Mm -hmm. Even for us adults, if somebody asks us a question, we don't immediately blurt out the answer. We mm -hmm. think. Our students do, especially because they're hampered by their ability to express their answers in English. So give them uh, allowance. Okay, and then wait for wait three seconds after asking the question, and then wait three three seconds also after the question has been answered. So, in other words, we are now getting them to. But sometimes it's already almost time. I need to get these questions <laughs> answered by my students. To then pay attention to the question, then. Decide first the meaning of the question. What is the teacher's question? Mm -hmm. And then the student generates a covert response in his mind. And then in his mind. And then generates an overt, meaning something that you could already hear, not just in his mind. And then, but remember, for our Korean learners, this is doubly hard. Because when they decipher, this is still English to Korean, okay? And then when they generate a response in their mind, that's all Korean. And then when they start giving you, generating an overt, that's Korean to English. <laughs> and then they revise the response. Okay, that takes time. So let's not be easily frustrated mm -hmm. when our kids don't respond immediately. Mm -hmm. It um, takes lots of patience. Yeah. <laughs> it needs, but with the Korean Pali Pali culture, which oh. we inevitably we have all already acquired, we also would want them to answer yeah. immediately. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's actually counterproductive. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. True. You are turning robots out of your children. Yes, You're not cool. making them uh, think anymore. Think because you would want instant recall, instant feedback. Remember, teach them how to learn. Don't just give them what to learn. Mm. That's the information. But teach them how to fend for themselves and to learn for themselves. Because in that way, your teaching becomes more meaningful. Okay, now this is something that we have to do. So first, you have to demonstrate listening. Show your students that you are interested in their response. Mm -hmm. How do you show? Really? <laughs> Sometimes you have to fake, uh, yeah. fake interest. <laughs> really? <laughs> something like that. Show interest by using nonverbal signs such as eye contact, you sit forward, something like that, all those nonverbal uh, actions, okay? Initial response may be fragmented or disjointed as the students grapple to clarify the, their idea. So, so guide them. So you mean? So guide uh, them as they give you the response. And then, Sustain the question. Use probes that encourage <coughs> clarification, extension, and elaboration of a response. For example, or alright, so what have you noticed with the character? Character is shy. So give them probing questions. Um, let them clarify why do you think mm. is the character is shy? Mm. Okay. How did you know that he is shy? So that gets them to think. And at the same time, already remembering 
the character. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, if we just rely on recall, probably the next week that they come to your class, they have forgotten everything. Mm -hmm. But if you got them to really use, manipulate the information, then retention is going to be, uh, without doubt, mm -hmm. it's going to happen. Allow wait time. Please, teachers, be comfortable with silence in the mm -hmm. classroom. Uh, don't think that the silence means your students are already plotting against you. <laughs> um, okay. Tell students and then tell students why you're waiting. Okay, class, I'm giving I'm going to give you time. But of course, you will be able to tell who among them are not really using the mm -hmm. thinking time to yeah. think about the answer. Yeah. So you, you have a way of finding out and telling how that is. Minimize feedback. Mm. Now, avoid excessive praise. Very good. Your answer. Mm. <laughs> you, the mere fact that you're all, you already acknowledge their answer is already enough motivation. Sometimes our praises become very superfluous to the point of this is an overkill already. <laughs> Too much praising. Uh, and then on the other hand, on the one hand it's good. On the other hand it's going to be detrimental to the other students. Mm. They would think I'm already, I'm a loser. I cannot think. Teacher is made to vacate the floor. That means don't just give your opinions. Don't feed the information, but let your students think among themselves. Okay? They could argue. Make make uh, the classroom chatter a healthy one. <coughs> as long as you know that they're chattering about the lesson. Okay? Don't be uncomfortable with silence. Just as much as you shouldn't be uncomfortable with chatter especially if you know that the chatter is about uh, the lesson all right okay yes. um, you stay. why you are afraid you have to go no, there because if i'm gonna sit here i can talk away so you can yeah. sit there. okay yeah, she, she, yeah. He will not yeah. kill you. So, if you can have one chair, you will not be able to see the screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll sit like this. Yeah. Okay. He, he's harmless. He's harmless. So, so I, I can I, I have this kind of learning that I need to see the face of the, you know, the one who... Uh, yeah. Alright. So...